Welcome back to Mom in Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Kat. On this episode, I'm joined by Nika Simister. She is a licensed clinical social worker with over two decades of experience in social services, with the last decade specifically to private practice. And she's worked with many populations in New York, but currently specializes in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, infertility, grief, and loss. And she's sharing with us today how perinatal grief is different than other types of grief and how parents can take care of themselves during the grieving process, as well as how grief just can impact so many things. And if you are somebody who's experienced a perinatal loss, I know you'll be able to resonate with the things that she is saying because it is unique. Um, It is a different type of loss. And unfortunately, it's one of the losses that people don't really acknowledge after a bit of time. Um... It, there, and there's so many complexities to that, and there are so many reasons why people who haven't been through something like this might have assumptions about the grief process. Um, and honestly, we're just not really well equipped um, we to talk about grief as a society. It's not something um, that we do with ease, and we're not really checking in regularly with people who need that kind of support. So let's get into it and meet Neka. Welcome, Neka. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm grateful that you're coming on today to talk about perinatal grief. And if we can just start there, kind of at at the top, what is perinatal grief? What will we be talking about today? So we'll be talking about loss that happens during um, pregnancy or after pregnancy. So we could be talking about a miscarriage, a medical termination, we could be talking about uh, SIDS, um, any grief that's happening up to two years um, after giving birth. So during and up to two years after giving birth. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, right, this is a very specific period of time yes. that you're describing. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the the types of grief that you hear about or how, I should say, how grief shows up for people? Um, with this, these kinds of losses? So it's interesting. It, it really depends on where the parent is on that journey. And what I mean by that, people really see grief differently from someone who may have passed away after living 90 years, right? It looks very different to someone who may have um, experienced a miscarriage at three weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Or two months mm-hmm. or eight months, mm-hmm. right? Or having to, again, have a medical termination, Um, That could look differently between two parents who, from two parents who had gotten pregnant um, naturally or through IVF, right? right? That grief could look really different. And so it really, it really, I like to call it like almost an invisible grief, you Mm -hmm. know, because there isn't specifically maybe a person that you've been able to have um, life experiences with, you know, before Mm -hmm. they passed away. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of times people don't have the same empathy that right. they would have for someone else who may have lost a grandmother or a parent or, you know, someone that they've had lifelong experiences with. Right. And so I think it really is a, a different grief and how lonely it can feel, you know, mm-hmm. and isolating mm-hmm. it can feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though, and it's interesting, even in that space, there tends to be comparisons, but it really is the usually the worst thing that has ever happened to that person. Right. Right, for sure. Um, no matter where they are, and so uh, I just think people don't have the same empathy uh, for someone who experiences loss during um, pregnancy. Right. So that invisible part, then, ooh, that's hard because if you're if uh, what you're saying, like people are uh, other people who didn't experience the loss are right. um, are at checking in on them, uh, the person no, who's experienced, yeah. I think it's, I think, so I think what's different with this loss is that people, there isn't 10, most times I'm sorry, my mind is moving fast. A Mm -hmm. lot of times there isn't a ceremonial piece, Mm -hmm. right? There may not be a a huge funeral, you know, that people get to attend, right? You know, it may be something really private. So outsiders don't get that kind of closure. You know, if someone has to return to work, right, then now people are asking about the child that's not there. 
right? If someone hasn't seen you in months, I mean, even down to going to a nail salon mm-hmm. where people mm-hmm. saw you pregnant, mm-hmm. you have to kind of continue to have this conversation yeah. because pregnancy is so visible, right? Right, in a way that looks really different. If someone hasn't seen me in a year, they may not know I lost my mom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It may or may not come up depending if they're close to me, right? But if someone in my local supermarket saw me pregnant, mm-hmm. you know, then this is what's this is what now they're asking about. Obviously, because that's the last state they saw me in. Right. And so it's so ongoing. If you have experienced a loss later in pregnancy, people don't consider that you still experience postpartum. Mm. You still uh, created milk. You still have all these things that are reminding you of the loss in a way that you don't experience when you lose someone else. Right. And so it's, it's really difficult when you move forward, trying mm-hmm. to move forward. The mm-hmm. future part of this grief and loss looks very different. Um. Right. I mean, it becomes so complex with um, that that invisible part where, like, let's say this example that you gave um, where somebody um, lost a child during pregnancy, um, but uh, towards the end of pregnancy, but they're still producing milk afterwards. Uh, that's not necessarily th- something other people are going to see or even even think about or ask about or like all the complexities that that are happening people aren't in in touch with other folks aren't in touch with yeah and the reality is that the our community doesn't necessarily support that right Mm. when somebody experiences a loss maybe they would have three months off now they have a week off and they have to return to work that disappears Right. Right. And so you don't have that same room Mm -hmm. to kind of sit and grieve. Mm -hmm. Right. So the life doesn't support loss in that way. Yeah. That is a real thing. Yeah. And so um, it also looks very different for someone who may be going through IVF. Mm -hmm. Sometimes getting your period every month is a loss. Totally. Right. In a way that people don't understand and they're grieving in a way that people won't understand Mm -hmm. um, unless they've experienced it themselves. A lot of times people are quick to say, well, you know, this happens to a lot of women. That may be true. Right. And Mm -hmm. it's still the worst thing that ever happened to me. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. And it's so easy for people to say, well, just try again. Mm. It's fine. Just do this again. Or. You already have children. Mm -hmm. It's fine, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's a very dismissive grief as well. Definitely. That's true. It's very, it can be very minimizing. I mean, I'm here, I'm thinking of examples of even people that I've um, met with as clients where um, there can be like different experiences even within a, a thing, like let's say IVF. Or somebody who's had to go through four, five, six retrievals, six. or somebody's gone through, let's say, like one transfer, um, mm-hmm. might say to somebody who's gone through like six transfers, well, you could just do this or that. That's what worked right. for me and it should right. work for you. I mean, they, like within the loss, there can be right. such different experiences. You know, I try to remind people it's really hard. It, even though most people, meaning friends and family, have really good intentions, right? Most people are so, um, they're unable to sit in the discomfort of someone else's grief. And so they have this knee-jerk reaction to say, what about this? Why don't you do this, right? Which feels really dismissive Mm -hmm. because the person experiences, of course, has thought about all the things. Mm -hmm. There's nothing Mm -hmm. that you're offering that they have not considered. (laughs) Right, 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 right. (laughs) Right, not new info. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it just, it, it can be very dismissive, even though it's not the intention. Right. For sure. Right. I don't, exactly. I don't think other people are trying to be jerks or, you know, no, uh, minimize no. someone else's experience. It usually, right. usually comes from a place of trying to be helpful, but it right. really misses because they the mark. can't sit in it. Right. So yeah. it's just like, how can I fix this? How can I fix this? How can I fix this for mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I have to tell people, there's literally nothing you can say in this mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just sitting with the person mm-hmm. and saying, I understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, I think we've lost that societally in a way. 
um, to just be able to sit with someone. I don't know. Maybe it never existed. <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't go back in time and check, but like there, there's, there is a, a, a way in which it's just, it's just hard to sit with hard things, um, for right. sure. But it is, it is, can be really powerful. Um, and I think we should come back to that in a little bit. Um, I, the, um, go, going back for a second to, um, the, yeah, the, the grief part, um, what are some, some ways that you've seen people try to cope with their grief? Um, like what, or yeah. what, even if it's not like a coping, what are people doing Joy. because of the grief? So it's interesting, you know, grief really, and I think all grief really changes you, right? I think about our our lifelines, right? And we have these markers that's before and after. And right. I always say grief is one of them. You know, it is after this happened. I was this way before this. And after this, I'm now this way. And I think because of, in some cases, there isn't this kind of ceremonial space, like a funeral, mm. right? people and there aren't like holidays unless you're in this area and now you know that there's like days that are dedicated mental health days that are dedicated to loss it's not this national thing so right. for example father jay just passed unfortunately you lost your dad people are going to think about you and say oh so you lost your dad i want to check in on you mm -hmm. people don't check in after that kind of loss there's nothing to spark that right right and yep. so I think at the beginning, I try to remind parents, you know, to just sit in it. You know, mm -hmm. I, and the, the, the response sometimes is just like, what do I need to do? Yeah. You know, I, I get a lot of couples that come in maybe as soon as a week after the loss. And they're like, okay, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. You know, and what they're really saying is, get me out of experience. It was really hard thing. Totally. And I have to say, I'm sorry. You're going to have to sit in this. There is yeah. no tool that's going to make this better right now. Right. And I would encourage them to sometimes maybe light a candle. You know, some people, depending on their religion, what they're able to do, mm -hmm. um, have some kind of, um, um, like, a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like an offering of some sort, you know. Oh, sure. I have some clients who, I have a specific client I remember, who every month during that, every year during the month of the loss, um, she wears blue nail polish to remind mm -hmm. her, right, of the right. son that she lost. Right. And so they don't have to be big, right? Right. That's a um, very, like, personal choice, personal decision, um, right? something that sounds like for, for that person that m had meaning to them that they to connected that, right? with. It's right. something that their partner recognizes. It's something that their family recognizes, right? That blue nail polish is an indicator that this is the month and this mm -hmm. is going to be some shifts and she may need a little bit more support. Right. Um, than normal. And so a lot of times I try to think about, I try to talk to them about where are you now? Let's just sit in this grief. How do we name this grief? And then how do we, you know, add this to be a part of our lives, right? right. And so, as you know, that idea of stages of grief is not something that we look at anymore. <laughs> right. And, right? And so I like to say grief is like a pendulum, mm -hmm. right? In the beginning, the, the swings are big, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, High mm -hmm. lows are large. Right. And then you want to get it to a point where it's just, it's not so big, mm -hmm. but it's always there. Right. Yeah. And so I really try to remind them, this is not about getting over grief. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. about how do I live with this grief in a way that feels good to me and I can move on with my life. Right. 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 Um, because what can happen sometimes, and I've seen this too, is that when people start to laugh or feel joy, they feel that guilt. Yep. Right? And I, I shouldn't be happy. I'm mm -hmm. grieving. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't mm -hmm. have laughter. I'm grieving. And trying mm -hmm. to remind them that we hold space for both things all the time. Yeah. Right. Right? This laughter is not going to ox out your grief. Right. And your grief is not going to ox out your joy. Mm -hmm. right? right? They can live together. And, and we do it all the time, whether we know it or not. That is true. Yeah. I mean, I love that um, idea of that kind of pendulum and trying to, you know, you're trying to get to a place where those, those um, sort of swings are, aren't as um, intense for sure. Right. And that, um, and that holding that both things can be true at the same time is really hard for people. 
It, it's like the concept is like how, well, first, I mean, when it first happens, how can anything feel good again? Right. It's like that. And, and, and it wouldn't, right? And I tell them, right. it's not going to, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So I say to them, how did you, what I want you to think about is how do you protect your space right now? Mm hmm you know, don't feel forced to go to outings you don't want to go to. Yeah. Don't be forced to go to a baby shower with your friends, even though you love them and you support them. Mm -hmm. You have the rest of the child wanted to be there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's okay to tell this friend, I can't right now. Right. You know, I'm mourning. Because people push themselves, right? They, they never sure want to feel do. bad. They never want to seem like they don't care. Or they can't have joy for other people. Mm -hmm. And so they put themselves in these positions where they're not honoring their feelings. And mm -hmm. so I really talk about that. Like, it's okay to kind of have a little circle, a little protective circle. And if that's as big or as small as you want, yep, yep. and lean into that. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a day you don't want to get out of bed because you don't want to cry all day, then do that. Mm -hmm. Right? There's nothing wrong. There's this idea that if I start crying, I'll never stop. Yeah, for sure. Because right? yeah. it feels so people. big. That's how big it, 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 it feels. It feels so big. Mm -hmm. And I remind them, you'll stop. Mm-hmm. And I've never met a person who couldn't stop crying. Right. Right. right, right. And so <laughs> I'm always like, when you find a person who started crying and couldn't stop, please introduce <laughs> me to them. Right. 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 right, right. <laughs> um, and then to your point about holding two things, you know, what I remind people is we do do it. If you think about mm -hmm. your life generally, it's very rare that all parts of your life are doing well at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. You can mm -hmm. be having great times with your family and work is horrible. Right. right. You can be thriving at work and your marriage is having some issues. Mm -hmm. You know, I've definitely been to a wedding and a funeral in the same week. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we do it all the time. We just don't pay attention to it. And so I think giving people examples of how they've done that mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. allows them to see that they can hold two things and they sure. will eventually get there. Right. Um, yep. But really leaning into what's coming up at the time and, and not intellectualizing what they think grief mm -hmm. should look like right yes yeah and um that uh sparks a, a thought for me too that um uh, there are people who let's say are doing their own comparative grief uh who will say things like well i i was quote unquote only eight weeks pregnant or mm -hmm. um whatever. minimizing, minimizing right. their own grief and feeling like they're not allowed to grieve or they shouldn't mm -hmm. grieve because it wasn't um, a full-term pregnancy or it wasn't right. a, a five-year-old or whatever um, right. that is. Right. Um, how do you help people navigate that? Well, I try to remind them, why are we comparing? How is, have you experienced this? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they'll say, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Right. And I said, then that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else, right? Me comparing doesn't make this less hard. Right. Actually, right. maybe it makes it harder. <laughs> harder. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. So what I try to talk to people about is there's a difference between grief and suffering. Oh, yeah. When you add these things, you are now suffering and grief is hard enough. Mm -hmm. Loss is hard enough. I don't need loss with guilt, then shame, then right. that's suffering. That is. Oh, that's, that's so, suffering. So, and no one yeah. needs to suffer. Mm -hmm. Grief is so heavy mm -hmm. by itself. It mm -hmm. needs no help. <laughs> Oof, that is a true statement. Right. And so I say to my clients, why, why are we suffering? Mm -hmm. Is grief not enough? Mm -hmm. That's deep, deep. Right. I mean, I think you're right. Like that happens all the time. That, that guilt. And one of her else, whatever other like, other things come up. Self-judgmental you know, stuff. The judgment, the, 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 the anxiety. You know, I had a client once who unfortunately experienced a loss. And so then she went back, and a lot of people do this, uh, think about it, to every single thing. Is it because I had a yogurt? Is it mm -hmm. because I went and I sat near a jacuzzi, right? And now the heat somehow did something, right? Like mm -hmm. your brain is trying to make sense of things. Right? right. Your brain right. is trying to have a cause and effect. Yep. This is another difference between this kind of loss. A lot of times the doctors just say, I don't know. Right. Right. What do you do with I don't know? 
I mean, that is so hard. Yeah. Right? Feel lost, it's really yeah. easy to say, this was a car accident, this happened, and because of this accident, this, one plus one equals two. Mm-hmm. It's devastating, but my brain can make sense of that. Mm-hmm. You saying you've done nothing wrong, but this horrible thing has happened. Mm-hmm. Your brain will look, will mm-hmm. search mm-hmm. really hard mm-hmm. to make sense out of something that will never make sense. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's where the guilt comes up. I should have, I should have read more. I should have done more. Mm -hmm. Right. If I knew about this thing, it would, you know, and I'm like, that's not true. We have Mm -hmm. no proof that these things are true. Right. You can read a thousand books and it will still never prepare you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. For pregnancy or grief or any of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, There's just not a, unfortunately, a lot of times the doctors say, we don't know what happened. Or right. it's something that they couldn't have done or something about earlier. And mm-hmm. and the medical system is sometimes not set up in ways that we need them to, to be. You know, unfortunately, yep. something has to happen to trigger certain types of tests. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if those things didn't happen, these tests would never be given. And so you would never find these things. And so right. Right. It's, it's just very difficult. Yeah, that, um, that looking... Uh, at yourself to see if you like you did something wrong um to create this i don't know maybe it is and i i think it's to have maybe a false sense of control to to think okay this happened like you were saying the one plus one equals but also like what how 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 really is that going to help you it doesn't and that's what i say too i say okay let's follow let's follow through this thought Okay, now we have an answer. Okay, this is the thing. What has it changed? Mm-hmm. Well, what it may change is in the future you say, oh, well, now I know not to do that. Mm-hmm. Right? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. But right to your point, there's no, like, proof that, you know, That's eating, true. like, deli meat was the thing. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it, it, yeah. You know, and sometimes, I mean, like, again, it's the knee jerk to response to say, why me? Mm-hmm. You know, I've had people say, is this my karma? What have I done? Mm -hmm. You know, what behaviors did I engage in when Mm -hmm. I was 10? You know, I mean, people will go all the way back to places, you know, when I was in high school, I was mean to someone. And this is why I'm now, Mm -hmm. you know, right? Because it just needs to make sense, right? They need to, someone has to be at fault. Right. And it it must be me as the carrier. Right. right? Well, and and to that point, it's um, because pregnancy is happening in one person's body that person's body it's so much easier to to blame the self because uh, right. right if you i mean you feel responsible for everything you eat you think you do i uh, like it's it's a lot it's a lot and then when i think about terminations that are have to be done for the child or for the safety of the mom mm-hmm. people think because people have a choice that there's no grief in that Right. And mm-hmm. so I have to make a really difficult decision. It's not me that I am excluded from deep grief. Right. 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 And again, right. it's invisible. People feel like, well, you made that decision. Why would you grieve? It was the right thing to do. Right. Maybe. Yes, it was the right thing to do. A hundred percent sure it was the right thing to do. I still experienced a loss. Yes. Yes. Right. And that's hard sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. for other people to understand and to explain. Right. Oh, so right. how do you find language to explain something that is so difficult, mm-hmm. right, that falls on you, mm-hmm. you're the responsible party, mm-hmm. and also saying, have empathy for me and hold space for me mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I'm still suffering. Right. It's hard to ask for that um, when you're in that space. I mean, the, the person who, who needs the hand uh, to reach out to them. It, it, when they're also responsible for asking for that hand, uh, yeah. it, it's it's really hard to your point, like even finding the words to explain it, let mm-hmm. alone to say, I need help when it feels yeah. like people around them aren't seeing them. No, people are moving on, right? People have moved on because mm-hmm. um, they haven't experienced it, not in a bad way. They just, they're not feeling it the way you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, grief looks different between both parents if there happens to be two. Right, um, a carrying and a not carrying, right? Mm-hmm. And so, 
in my experience, if um, if it's in a heterosexual relationship, men tend to want to fix really quickly and move mm-hmm. on. Not that they're not grieving, right. but they tend to want to do, right? How can I make it better? Right. What can I do better? Right. You know, whereas the woman may want to sit in it a little longer. And then there's this perception that your partner isn't grieving the way you're grieving. And so mm-hmm. now there's this other layer mm-hmm. of conflict mm-hmm. around grief, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I've seen that happen with the parents or the grandparents, right? Yeah. There's a different yeah. conflict there, right. right? Having to explain to other people. Um, again, if you already have children, mm-hmm. you know, I have, a, I have a friend of mine who had a very difficult time having children and, and she's on her, she's going to have a fourth child that went through a lot of IVF and she had a lot of loss and people had no empathy for her mm-hmm. because they were like, well, you're doing this to yourself. You have three children already. Why are you doing this, right? Not understanding all of the connections to her childhood and things that she wanted, her family, you know, her own reasons, right? For sure. Right. There's like a, it could be a very deep, um, very deep, very, very deep roots into understanding what's going on in that particular moment or year or right. transition. Yeah. Right. Yep. Or something as simple as experience greed. And then feeling guilt because you feel like you're so in the grief that you're neglecting your other children, even if you're really not neglecting your other children. Mm-hmm. It feels like that because mm-hmm. it's taking up so much space in your head. Totally. Right? So now you have guilt on top of that. It's, mm-hmm. it's so complicated. It, it it's really so is. so complicated in ways I don't think people really think about. Uh, yeah, you're right. Um, you're right. I don't. I don't think they do. Especially, yeah, for somebody who's not gone through it, it's hard to kind of extrapolate and um even man it would be nice if people could even just be curious like right. a, um, a sympathetic or empathetic curiousness would go a long way like how are you really doing if you want to talk about it I, that's exactly what i say I, I tell my clients okay you know your community mm. who can hold space everybody may not be able to do that Mm-hmm. think about who can do what and mm-hmm. assign accordingly mm-hmm. you may have the friend who will gladly sit with you and listen quietly and you may have a friend who will order uber eats and make sure you're fed mm-hmm. right. right not everybody they're can both, do everything they're both really important right because i need <laughs> yeah. you to eat okay? right. 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 <laughs> right but don't give everyone the same responsibility and then if they can't show up in that space then you're feeling like your needs aren't being met so I usually say, take a step back. Who are the people that you know can really sit in this with you? And ask them. And then designate those few people for that specific responsibility, which they'll gladly do mm-hmm. a lot of mm-hmm. times. Most times people don't ask because of shame. Because also what comes up with grief is I couldn't do something right. My body couldn't do. Mm. I couldn't do as a mm-hmm. woman what right. every woman is supposed to be able to do. Right. Right. And so there's this less than feeling that comes up as well. Mm-hmm. So if I have to ask for help, I'm admitting mm-hmm. in some mm-hmm. ways that I'm less than. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely not true, but mm-hmm. this is what we think. And then they say, well, my friends have things to do. They're busy. Everyone's busy. I don't want to burden yeah. others. And so I try to remind people, most people aren't martyrs. Mm-hmm. Most people will tell you no if they don't mm-hmm. want to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't have to make that decision for them. They will tell you what they can and cannot do. Right. 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 Can you imagine like that? That's a heavy load to carry to also be grieving, need help and support and manage somebody else's experience and feelings. That That's another suffering. To suffering. Put it, put it before. <laughs> I'm always like, okay, so we want to suffer. Well, okay. We want to suffer. <laughs> Right. You know, and my clients laugh sometimes. Of and course. I'm just like, oh, so we are we suffering today? And they're <laughs> mm-hmm. like, no, 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 no. You know, we don't want to suffer. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm like, ask. Let's mm-hmm. talk about that. You know, I usually try to have those conversations if I'm being honest. When I find out my before pregnancy, it's kind mm-hmm. of happening to be with someone that they're preparing mm-hmm. or as soon as they get pregnant. I'm like, okay, let's look at this community. Anything can happen. Let's see who can do what. Right. Right. Sometimes it, you may want it to be your parents and it can't be mm-hmm. because they have their own expectations and their own ideas of what should happen for you. Mm-hmm. And so I always say, don't, um, don't let the roles be the, the, the determining factor. Well, because she's my sister. She oh, I see. Be right. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
right? Or because totally. that's my mom. I'm like, maybe, but maybe they can't. Then maybe it's the coworker mm-hmm. who's experienced this too that can actually sit with you in a different way, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so really being curious about what your needs are mm-hmm. and also being very clear that they can change mm-hmm. all the time. Your needs can change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you're not locked into this. I'm always saying like, you let people know, this is what I need right now. Maybe in a week, I don't want this. Right. Please be flexible with me. Right. 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 You don't my need 50 lasagnas change. in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> my needs may change, right? Mm-hmm. I may think at first I want you to check in on me every day. Mm-hmm. And after a week, I feel like that's really overwhelming. I should be able to say, you know what? Actually, I thought I would like that, but I don't I don't want that. Right. You know, and that's okay. Yeah. Sometimes you want to talk about it. And sometimes I've had friends who say, that's the last thing I want to talk about. I want to hear about what else is going on. Yes. Right. right? And that's okay too. Yep. Right. So really giving permission for the flexibility mm. to move in any direction mm-hmm. that feels appropriate. Mm-hmm. That's an important uh, concept and word, that flexibility. Uh, right. Because if, if, if it's your first grief like this, you don't know. You don't know how you're going to feel. And if it's your second and third and fourth, you also don't know how you're going to feel. You don't know how you're going to feel. It's not also like the very same. different. Mm-hmm. You are in a different stage of your life each time. You're a different version of yourself. Mm. Right? I don't know what else is going There's so many variables. Right. Right? Am I feeling joy in my marriage when this happened? Am I already feeling some conflict when this happens? You know, am I thriving in my job when this happens? Or did I just get fired when this happened? There's so many other things that have nothing to do with the loss that yes. with that will affect it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's, there is so much. It is uh, sort of infinitely complex. Um, yes. uh, every time, every time. There, there's also there. Um, I'm thinking of a couple of a handful of folks actually who are also dealing with um, autoimmune disorders while like yes. trying to you know, have a a first or second child and Mm -hmm. having to manage this whole other thing, um, like medical conditions and whatever else, like that's what you, there's so many different layers. Goodness. I mean, you know, you hit it right on the nose, right. Um, any medical concerns and, and how that affects decision-making too, Mm. you know, and the empathy, right. So when they say you knew this was going to be difficult, why are you surprised that this happened? People say really weird things, right? Yeah, they do. Um, But it comes up, right? And so, and also the person feels like, did I do this to myself? Did I want this too badly? Mm -hmm. Did I push my body too hard, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe, maybe not, right? Mm -hmm. But all of those things play a role. It also plays a role sometimes on how the family supports, how the spouse supports. You know, I've seen people with um, chronic illnesses and one parent wants to push forward and keep trying. And the other parent says, I don't think it's worth the risk. Right. There's big conflict there. Yeah. Right. You know, and then imagine there's a loss on top of that. Mm-hmm. There's some blaming now that happens. Ooh. It's not easy. And so mm-hmm. that's why the comparing makes no sense. Right. It, right. right. It makes no sense within those, these types of griefs. And then also uh, like any other type of loss at other times, like this year, yeah. everything you're saying is why this is such a unique, um, and, and particularly painful kind of a grief. Grief. People don't have the same empathy. If you mm-hmm. unfortunately may lose a parent, people will know that you will grieve that for the rest of your life. And they know that mm-hmm. you can lose your parent 20 years ago. No one would say, that was 20 years ago. Why are you still grieving? No one would say that. If you had is, miscarriage 20 years ago, people are like, really? That was so long ago. Mm-hmm. You really still, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's very interesting. It's very yeah. interesting. It, it is. It is. And it's kind of pretty messed up. It is. And so people feel so isolated. They don't mm-hmm. want to say mm-hmm. many years later, you know, even if they have children that they still think about this and they still grieve it. And so they mm-hmm. hold it a lot, mm-hmm. right? And I, and I think that's really sad that they don't have permission by society in a right. lot of ways to be open about their grief for however long they, right. they're experiencing it, which quite frankly is forever, like right. any other grief. Right, right. And um, 
a lot of the things you're saying, this like giving yourself permission to grieve and having the flexibility, um, this and a lot of the other things that, you know, little gems, big gems you've dropped in here are you know, like, how do people get through this? This is everything you're saying is how it's the permission, it's the flexibility, it's the figuring out what you need in any, you know, given centering yourself. That's what, what's that? I said centering yourself. Right. You know, I sent to some people, this is your time to be extremely selfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you need? How do you feel? What feels good? What feels good to you? What feels right for you? Mm -hmm. Right. And every answer will be the right answer. Mm -hmm. If you want to be around loved ones today, then that's the right answer. If you want to be in your covers in the bed, then that's the right answer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's whatever you need at that time, right? Um, mm -hmm. And that's it. And it's hard. And, and, it, and it means dismantling the idea that grief looks a certain way. I'm right. always like, throw that away. People yeah. always want to grieve the right way. You'd be surprised how many people say, I'm coming into session because I want to make sure I'm grieving properly. <laughs> I've heard that too. Yeah. I'm I'm not laughing at them. I'm I'm laughing cuz I hear it a lot too right. and it's like right. they don't realize how much additional pressure that is on them and that there's like inherent is in that is I want to do the right thing or I am not doing the right doing thing. Doing the right thing, right? So what I tend to ask is what does that look like for you? What's the picture you have in your mind mm -hmm. of the correct way to grieve? And a lot of times they'll say I don't know. Right. And I'll say because there isn't one. Mhm. Mm you don't know because you've never seen an example of one mm -hmm. because there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So, <clears throat> yeah, you mentioned before um, that, you know, those like five stages uh, that we used to kind of cling to, to try and understand like, where are we in this? I, th I think there's a remnant of that still in the like, mm -hmm. so like what stage am I supposed to be in kind of a thing, but like those five stages are parts of, parts of what is happening for sure and a lot of part of a lot of other things that are happening and it you can be all over the place all over and that's why I'm, i tell people i'm like throw that away because mm -hmm. it implies this one direction there are times you're going to feel angry and then yep. you might go back yep to sadness right and there may be times when you say there's acceptance and six months later you realize there is no acceptance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and so it can always change so i always like that's why i like to use the pendulum Mm -hmm. I'm like, where are you? How much is this swinging? Mm -hmm. Right? And that's a good way to kind of check in. Like be for somebody to kind of gauge themselves. But that, that I think too is as hard that um, when you don't know where you're at w with something, it just feels it's like very disorienting. Um, you know, that feeling like people don't know what day it is or like what they were supposed to do. There's like a fogginess, a brain fog that comes with all of this where it's hard to track at, at all sometimes. Um, just day to day stuff. So if they have an opportunity because life, right, everyone doesn't, is not always given the time mm -hmm. to grieve. But if they do have an opportunity of time, I start to talk about what are kind of the basic needs. Are you brushing your teeth, showering, eating, sleeping well, mm -hmm. right? Are, mm -hmm. are you getting your um your kind of daily kind of needs met? Mm -hmm. Let's start there, mm -hmm. right? Um, then we can go into like, are you taking care of your bills? Like, you have to make sure you remain housed. You have to make mm -hmm. sure like, you know, those things are happening. Then we can move out into like social life, right? So maybe kind of like Maslow's. Mm -hmm. hierarchy of needs <laughs> kind of looking at that like where are we on this right mm -hmm. are we just kind of getting these things met that's good mm -hmm. and then we can add to it more and more right if you have the luxury of doing that right um sometimes you have to just put on the mask and get back to work mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but then i say to them as soon as you walk through the door gladly throw that mask off right. and lean into however you're feeling sure right right um so it's it's it really depends. It depends on the support. It depends on the support of the partner, mm -hmm. you know, um, and how long they allow you to sit in the space. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes because people can't sit in it, they're mm -hmm. pushing you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they can't manage anymore, right? And so how much is this being directed by someone else, right? Well, I'm that's the. Uh, the, I think the the beauty of going to a therapy to a specialist, somebody who ha has you know studied this and worked with people who've gone through this kind of grief, is 
um, like you and other therapists who specialize can help people set those like internal boundaries for themselves. Like, "Mm, all right, uh, homeboy's not really, uh, you know, here for this. So I'm going to go this way. Um, or, um, to be able to say to somebody, even somebody they love a lot, um, I, I have to be able to feel these feelings. Yeah. And it's just like a therapist can really help navigate these waters and, and figure out how to give you the get... language, right? Mm-hmm. Help you give you the language and say, hey, I, I know you don't understand and you don't have to. Mm-hmm. I like to tell my clients that they don't have to understand, mm-hmm. but they do have to respect it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you can say, I know you don't understand that this is really making me sad still, but it doesn't change that I'm still sad. And so right. please, this is this is where it is right now. Mm-hmm. You know, and and can you have some empathy for me or can you give me some grace around this? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I always try to remind the support system that you never feel worse than a person experiencing it. Mm hmm. Right. And so when you think you can't tolerate it, imagine they feel 10 times worse. Mm-hmm. You know, and that tends to give people a little bit of a shock. You, yeah. You're not having it the worst. <laughs> right, 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 right. Let me give you a reminder. Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This, this is not, trust me, if you're thinking it's hard, it's much harder for the person in it. Mm-hmm. Right. If you think you just want them to be better, trust me, they want to be better too. Right. You don't want these things more than them. Right. You know, so when you're thinking you're pushing and you're encouraging and they're giving you pushback, it's because they're not ready. It's not because mm-hmm. they don't want the same thing that you want. Mm-hmm. So give them some grace. And right. I think sometimes people just need to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and and the person who's going through it uh, needs to hear that, too, that the, the people around them might not necessarily get it. Um but it doesn't mean they don't love them and care about love them. Love them. They love them. Most of them love them deeply, which is why they want them to be happy really fast. They're like, <laughs> I need you to get back to their happy place. I know mm-hmm. you to be joyful and great and all these things. And I, I want this for you so badly mm-hmm. that I'm dismissing how you're feeling now mm-hmm. <laughs> unintentionally <laughs> to get you there. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. And sometimes I even say, tell them your therapist said. You know, That's especially when I think trick. about yeah. people who are people pleasers who have yep. a really hard time. Yep. This is not the time to start, you know, pushing back on your people pleasing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you can work on that later. Right. And so, I'm so I'm like, just tell I said it. Mm-hmm. I said it. I said you can't go. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> gotta listen to, gotta listen to. <laughs> Whatever yeah. works, right? Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna do to make sure your needs are met. So if I'm the bad guy, gladly. <laughs> yes. Right? Absolutely. We can. I think. I think I want to just say the biggest message is that however you to trust your feelings mm-hmm. and their feelings are just indicators of what's mm-hmm. happening, mm-hmm. that okay. there's no right way yeah. to be. And really, please reach out to a therapist and mm-hmm. someone who can sit with you and really give you the language to navigate the space and to ensure that your needs are met in the best way they can be met. Uh, well, thank you so much for being with us and sharing all of this. I and mean, these are, these are, like I said before, gems. Um, and uh, clearly like you are great at what you do and the, the people who come to meet with you are are getting the kind of support that they really need the real, real stuff. And, um, I can hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I love working with, uh, birthing people. I I think, I think, you know, I always tell them that there's no trickle up trickles down you know mm-hmm. and so i'm always interested in the care and again grief the specific type of grief is so difficult um i really enjoy holding space um these times and i think it's really important that people get their needs met and they feel held in mm-hmm. this really difficult time absolutely thank you for being on Thank you so much. You can connect with NECA at mylocaltherapist.org, on Instagram at NECA Simister, and also on LinkedIn. And whether you really know it or not, you know somebody who's experienced some kind of perinatal loss. Uh, Not everybody talks about it, but loads of people experience it and unfortunately suffer silently. And people who have been through it can really benefit from hearing an, an episode like this today, so please do share this with them. And thank you so much for being with us. Until next time.